What's up guys, Jason here, back at it again with another video, and for today's video, we will be unboxing and reviewing the Realme C11. As usual, this is Realme's yellow box. It says here C11, Realme, and some more branding on the sides of the box. So, what's new with the Realme C11? According to Realme, the highlights of this device is of course the 5000mAh battery capacity, a 13 megapixel AI dual camera, a 6.5 inch mini drop display, and of course its chipset which is the MediaTek Helio G35 processor. Upon opening the box, there is this smaller box which has all the paperwork and the SIM tool. Unfortunately, we don't have the jelly case here. As with most entry-level smartphones, we have here the phone itself which I got in a pepper gray colorway. But let's set this aside for now. A micro USB cable and the 10 watt power brick. Now this is the phone itself which again I got in a pepper gray colorway. And this is Mary's phone in mint green. And why I got the pepper gray colorway? Well, I guess it's the color of the day since it's also the color of the shirt I'm wearing. Okay, for my first impressions, as you can see, the most noticeable change is the new square camera bump. It is unlike the vertical pill-shaped cameras of Realme budget phones of the past. The Realme branding also stands out more. It is placed along the smooth line that runs across the back underneath the camera bump. This gives the phone a dual tone finish. I'm not entirely sure if I'm a fan of this, but it does look kinda nice. The phone is made out of plastic. The back is grippy because of its textured finish. And this matte finish helps keep fingerprints and smudges away. Also, another thing to point out, there is no fingerprint sensor. So you'll have to make do with face unlock. The angled edges are quite sharp. I honestly thought that this will become inconvenient after using it for a long time. But I was wrong. The size and grip is alright. And for a plastic phone, it is quite hefty. Weighing in at 196 grams. And that may be because of the 5000mAh battery. At the right, you have the volume rocker and the power button. At the left, you have the triple slot SIM tray, which houses two nano SIMs and a micro SD card. At the bottom, you have the 3.5 mm audio jack, a microphone, the micro USB port, and a speaker grill. Again, do take note that this is an entry level smartphone, so you can't really expect a Type C port here. Now, let's talk about the display. But the question is, how good is it? Is this something we can work around with, especially during these times? Like, for example, online classes, binge watching. Netflix and YouTube, or even some gaming. There's a 6.5 inch IPS LCD panel with HD plus resolution and a water drop style notch. It is a familiar screen, one we've seen several times on budget Realme smartphones in the past. The display quality is fairly decent for its price point. It is nice and vibrant. It gives you enjoyable experience while watching YouTube or Netflix, and it is adequately bright indoors. But being an IPS LCD panel, you may struggle with the screen under direct sunlight. You can also play around with the screen color temperature to your liking, either you want it cool or warm. But for me, I just leave it on default because I like the color that way. Also, this phone does not have Corning's Gorilla Glass protection, so you might want to take note of that. Under the hood of the Realme C11, it has an 8-core MediaTek Helio G35 processor. For its Antutu benchmark score, it scored 107,979. In terms of real-world performance, the Realme C11 is not that sluggish to work with. Apps like Facebook, Messenger, Twitter, and even Zoom open fairly quickly. But gaming apps like Asphalt and Mobile Legends took quite a few seconds. The touch response was also okay, but do take note that the variant I have here is the 3 gigs of RAM with 32 gigs of internal storage, which sadly is not available in the Philippines. What we do have is the 2 gigs of RAM with 32 gigs of internal storage. So yes, I was able to keep a couple of apps in the background open, but I would advise against opening too many apps at once. Playing Asphalt 9 on this phone is playable, but you do get a couple of frame drops here and there, and I strongly advised against putting it into high mode because the game will crash. Now for its software. The Realme C11 runs Android 10 with Realme UI as its skin. It is a fairly clean UI. I like it because as Mary said, on her video, it is a combination of Oxygen OS and One UI, which gives you an almost stock Android experience. You have here Dark Mode, an app drawer so you could keep the interface clean. You also have here Focus Mode to assure no distractions, but sadly you don't have the smart sidebar. And since there is no fingerprint sensor, the face unlock is the only biometric option there is to unlock the phone. And to power up this device, you have a 5000mAh battery capacity. And Realme 
they promised that you'll have two days of actual use. But when I used it, it lasted me around one and a half days, which is not far from Realme's promise. And to charge it up, you have the 10 watt power brick that Realme provided with the box. Now let's talk about its camera, which is the main noticeable difference in the Realme lineup. It has a dual rear camera, consisting of a 13 megapixel main camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor, which is a pretty standard setup for a budget smartphone. And I have to say that the Realme C11 does well in capturing daylight photos. It is pretty color accurate, looks rich and vibrant, and there's a good amount of detail and contrast as well. And something worth mentioning for the price you paid for, this camera is capable of night mode, or nightscape as Realme calls it. Nightscape allows you to capture brighter and clearer photos in low light. And the nightscape mode does improve colors and contrast, but the photos will kind of look noisy. And sometimes the images can look quite unnatural. There aren't many smartphones in this price point which has a dedicated night mode. I'm really happy that the Realme C11 gives us this option even though it's kind of a hit or miss. Now for the price and who this phone caters to. The variant which I don't have here which is the 2 gigs of RAM with 32 gigs of internal storage costs 4,990 pesos. Also, there is a special offer on July 23, 6 p.m. on Shopee to get it at 8% off when you use the code GADGETZONE8, which will give you a 400 peso discount, bringing it down to 4,590 pesos. Now, to who does this phone cater to? Well, for one thing, it is an ideal homeschooling smartphone. If you're gonna ask me, especially now in this situation, where online schooling is the norm, this is a good entry-level smartphone. It has a good processor for your everyday needs, a large battery capacity for all-day use, a large screen for watching movies and some gaming, and a fresh new design. And by the way, speaking of online schooling, this unit will be retrieved back by Realme, and it is gonna be donated to the Young Focus Foundation for children that are in need of online schooling phones. And that shows that Realme does really care. So that is it for today's video. Again, it's me, Jason. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.